My name is Dana Gardner and I will be doing an evidence summary and discussion of a study using cryotherapy as a modality in recovery. The title of the article is Partial Body Cryotherapy and Cold Water Immersion After Muscle Damage in Females. This study was done in Switzerland and published in 2019 in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports. The purpose of this study was to examine the effects of cold water immersion, partial body cryotherapy, and a passive control on physiological and recovery variables after exercise-induced muscle damage, specifically in the female population. I personally love that they chose their focus population as female-specific because when looking at peer-reviewed studies on cryotherapy, I was only able to find primarily male-only studies. Um, so what is cryotherapy? It is a form of therapeutic modality using extreme cold temperatures. Most people think of cryo chambers when they hear cryotherapy, and while that is correct, um, it can also just be as simple as an ice pack applied to the body or even used in medical techniques to destroy certain tissues that can be harmful to the human body, such as tumors. Um, cold water immersion is when very cold water is used as a therapeutic modality. These can be ice baths or plunge pools in which the body is immersed in. Um, the first hypothesis of this study was that cold water immersion would elicit a greater physiological effect than partial body cryotherapy or the control group. Um, the secondary hypothesis was that recovery would be expedited following cold water immersion compared with partial body cryotherapy and the control group. The study started with 30 healthy females, all aged about 20 to 25 years old. Two females could not complete the study due to unrelated illness, bringing the new total to 28 subjects. All were recreationally trained, so they were physically active for at least two hours a week, but did not have history of resistance training. Um, so moving on to the methods, the partial body cryotherapy group consisted of 10 females. The cold water immersion group consisted of 10 females. And the control group consisted of eight females. For this study, the partial body cryotherapy group utilized a cryo cabin and was exposed to vaporized liquid nitrogen for 30 seconds at negative 60 degrees Celsius, and then for two minutes at negative 135 degrees Celsius. All participants wore bikinis and cold resistant shoes. The cold water immersion group were submerged in a plastic tub to the level of the individual sternum and stirred cold water at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius for a total of 10 minutes. The temperature for the water was monitored with a thermometer throughout the duration. And following the immersion protocol, the participants towel dried and changed into dry bikinis. The control group received no intervention, of course, and rested in bikinis in a supine position for 10 minutes. Um, the study was completed over five experimental days. On day one, all participants were familiarized with the vertical jump performance and the maximum voluntary isometric contraction. On experimental day two, participants were randomly allocated into either the partial body cryotherapy, cold water immersion, or the control group. The physiological variables measured were muscle oxygen saturation, cutaneous vascular conductance, mean arterial pressure, and skin temperature. All four of these variables were always assessed in the supine position during pre-intervention, on minute zero immediately after the intervention, and at 10 minute intervals up to 60 minutes following the interventions. The recovery variables measured were DOMS, or delayed onset of muscle soreness, muscle swelling, vertical jump performance, and maximum voluntary isometric contraction. These variables were assessed before intervention, one hour post-intervention, and in 24-hour intervals up to 72 hours post-treatments on days two through five and the exact order just mentioned. To induce muscle damage in the knee extensor muscles, specifically the vastus lateralis, um, which is one of our quadricep muscles, all 28 participants were to perform five sets of 20 repetitions of self-paced drop jumps with two minutes of rest between each set. On each landing of the drop jump, they were encouraged to jump up as high as possible um, upon landing. The recovery interventions were used immediately following the completed 100 drop jumps in total. So moving on to the physiological measurements that were measured post-intervention, 
Muscle oxygen saturation of the vastus lateralis was measured using near-infrared spectroscopy. The monitor was placed midway on the right vastus lateralis, and due to safety reasons, the monitor, of course, was removed during the drop jumps and during both Cole's interventions. Cutaneous vascular conductance of the left anterior thigh was measured with a laser speckled contrast imaging or LSCI device. The LSCI device can record rapid changes in superficial blood flow across a larger skin surface area. Blood pressure was measured using an automated sphygmomanometer monitor from the left brachial artery and mean arterial pressure was calculated. For skin temperature, the mean was calculated from five sites throughout the body. Moving on to the recovery measurements, DOMS of the knee extensor muscle soreness was measured using a subjective rating of zero through 10 visual analog scale. Zero indicated no soreness and 10 indicated severe muscle soreness. The participants were instructed to rate their level of soreness during a squat at a 90 degree angle um, in their knees, which was held for three seconds. Muscle swelling of the right anterior thigh was assessed by the same investigator via ultrasound in a supine position. Muscle swelling was defined as the distance from the muscle bone interface to the subcutaneous adipose tissue muscle interface. Vertical jump performance was measured on a jump plate. The subjects were to perform standardized counter movement jumps with their hands on their hips, and they were told to jump as high as possible and were blinded to the vertical jump performance values. The vertical jump was measured three times and the max value of the three attempts were used to assess the vertical jump performance on each experimental day. As for maximum voluntary isometric contraction of the right knee extensor, the contraction was measured on an ergometer chair at a, uh, excuse me, a knee angle of 120 degrees and a hip angle of 100 degrees. The subjects were instructed to maximally extend their knee for the duration of four seconds. This process was performed three times with a two minute break between each set. The max value of the three attempts were used to assess maximum voluntary isometric contraction on each experimental day. Now moving on to the results of the physiological measurements illustrated on figure two of the study, muscle oxygen saturation was significantly lower in the cold water immersion group compared with a partial body cryotherapy group 10 minutes after the treatment. Both cold intervention groups, group values, were significantly lower compared with values in the control group throughout the 60-minute follow-up period. For mean arterial pressure, no significant treatment or time effect were observed. However, a reduction over time was evident. For skin temperature, you can see in Table 3, mean skin temperature decreased over time in both cold intervention groups, while it increased in the control group mean skin temperature was significantly lower in the cold water immersion group compared with the partial body cryotherapy group between 10 and 40 minutes. Cold water immersion resulted in significantly lower values compared with the values in the control group for up to 60 minutes after the treatment. And moving on to the recovery measurement results, a significant treatment time and time treatment interaction were observed in the DOMS. In all three groups, DOMS increased over time, but was significantly lower in both cold groups compared with the control group throughout the 72 hour follow-up period. No differences between the two cold groups were observed for DOMS. As for muscle swelling, it increased in all three groups over time and only a significant time effect was observed. For vertical jump performance, there was no significant treatment effect, but there was a significant time effect and time treatment interaction. Vertical jump performance decreased in all three groups over time. After one hour, vertical jump performance was higher following partial body cryotherapy compared with cold water immersion. Vertical jump performance values were significantly higher in the partial body cryotherapy group after 24 hours compared with the values in the control group. No differences were found between the cold water immersion group and the control group. Lastly, maximum voluntary contraction only showed a significant time effect, but no treatment effect. 
maximum voluntary contraction decreased in all three groups over time. After results were analyzed, the first main finding of the study was that the physiological effects of partial body cryotherapy are generally similar to cold water immersion. The second finding was that compared to the control group, DOMS improved much quicker after both cold interventions. As for muscle oxygen saturation, as expected, there was an increase, significant increase in the control group after exercise. Muscle oxygen saturation in both partial body cryotherapy and cold water immersion groups reduced following the exercise-induced muscle damage compared to baseline values by about 15%, but was not a significant decrease. Peripheral skin temperatures in the lower limbs were significantly lower compared with baseline after both cold interventions. Cold water immersion reduced skin temperature of the lower limbs more than the partial body cryotherapy. Mean skin temperature significantly increased in the control group during the 60 minute follow-up showing that the high intensity protocol significantly increased skin temperature, which makes sense. Looking at figure 3C, we can see an interesting finding. Only one hour into recovery, vertical jump performance was significantly higher in the partial body cryotherapy compared with the cold water immersion group. Now after 24 hours, vertical jump values were closer to baseline in the partial body cryotherapy in comparison to the control group. The results of this study support previous findings showing that cold water immersion appears to be effective at restoring muscle function during jump performance, indicating that cold water immersion may be more effective for recovery of stretch shortening cycle movements rather than isometric strength recovery. Interestingly, the results of this study also indicate that partial body cryotherapy is even more effective than cold water immersion in restoring short-term vertical jump performance. So if you're a jumper, you wanna know that. Um, although both cold interventions exhibited superior values compared to the control group for reducing DOMS, no main differences between all three groups were observed in muscle swelling, strength, or vertical jump performance. This study, of course, does have its limitations, just like all other studies. Um, they did mention in this study that menstrual cycles were not controlled for. For this reason, different estrogen levels of the subjects might have elicited different results in the study. Estrogen in animals can have a sufficient protective effect on skeletal muscle to reduce the muscle damaging processes after exercise. In humans, it is slightly less clear, but definitely could be an impact on the results. This study was also non-invasive. It would be very interesting, especially in my opinion, um, to assess the responses to inflammatory cytokines and muscle damage biomarkers. Um, and though this study has its limitations, I found this study to be one of the easiest studies to follow along with. I personally thought it was extremely well done in their discussion, design, and structure. Everything discussed in the study was extremely thorough, leaving almost no question on their methods, equipment used, study design, and their reasonings for their study approach. The tables and charts were very well made and easy to comprehend, which is something I find most important in uh, comprehending and verifying results and evidence in a study. If you get a chance to read this study yourself, you will find a ton of referencing to other studies throughout that are very similar to this one, um, but using males only, like I stated previously. They discuss similarities and differences in the findings with females versus males in detailed depth with interesting explanations on why these could be. This study was the first to directly compare the physiological responses and effects on muscle recovery between partial body cryotherapy and cold water immersion in females. I would like to give a shout out to my colleagues, Megan Merrow and Jill Shaw, who assisted me in the making of this video. I hope this study and critical appraise of this article was insightful and opens other minds to possible ideas of studies in the future assessing cryotherapy as a recovery modality after muscle damage. Thank you.